of the people's worship of this lovely Lord's Day. Uh, and to those of you who are gathered with us online, uh, happy Mother's Day to all the moms here and to moms gathering around uh, devices today listening to the service. As for those who are gathered here, please silence your cell phones if you haven't already done that. Also, uh, you have the blue sheet in your bulletin. We invite you to take that home. We have our prayer list uh, published here if you would like to pray for those who are on our prayer list. And uh, also, all the events that are coming up are posted on here so that you can invite others to join us here for all our exciting events. Um, as far as the service is concerned, again, um, we do have gluten free workers available. Uh, just indicate if you need them. Uh, if I'm not fully aware uh, that you need papers. Uh, there will be no Sunday school today uh, after church. Also, May 15th, uh, please mark that date. That's next <coughs> Sunday. We will be having our special congregation meeting. We only have one item on the agenda, and that is our parking lot repairs and the cost of that. So please, uh, if you can be here next Sunday, for those of you who are gathered around the devices at home, uh, we would appreciate uh, able bodies here so that we can um, vote and decide what to do with our parking lot, which has become unsafe in many areas. Uh, Save the date, July 18 to 22nd. Mandarin Lutheran Church is making waves. Yes, yeah, see how I got that in the interview. <laughs> we are having BBS that we are uh, we. It will be the first BBS that we've had since I got here, but apparently uh, we have not had BBS uh, in quite a while. So we are excited about that. However, we need some ministry partners to make it happen. So uh, you would have seen in the Mandarin Mason Jury, we've already opened it on Thursday night or yesterday, uh, that there's a little form that we're asking you to fill out. If you have not seen it, please, sometime in this week, if you could go into Mandarin Messenger, click on it, fill out the form. We timed it. It takes approximately two minutes of your time to fill out that form. And let us know if you can help, how you can help, and what time of day is better for you. This is the important part for us as we do the planning for BBS is to try and figure out if you want a morning or an evening BBS. So if you will let us know if you can help and what time suits you better, that would help us a lot with our planning. And if you could do that by next Sunday, we would truly appreciate that. Anything else you want to say about BBS, Judy? Um, okay, thank you. Mandarin Food Bank is in need of quite a few items. Again, we ask you to open up your Mandarin Messenger and see an update in this year. It's very really long uh, this month, so I am not going to read out all the items that are needed. Are there any other announcements for the good of the community? I want to thank the sit and speak group. Is that what you're going to say, Susan? Yeah, I'm just going to remind everybody we have prayer time on Wednesday evenings at 7. Yes. yes. And Wednesday, uh, with the daily, we send out a link for that so you don't have to look for it in Mandarin and Messenger. Uh, just click on that link and you can join us for prayer time. Uh, and then Sit and Stitch made those beautiful uh, water bags, which we are going to donate to a uh, uh, nursing home, uh, assisted living facility. Um, and we want to thank them for that. We will say a prayer of blessing uh, before we offer the week prayer. Okay, we continue with our prayer.
day to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, make us thank God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with your mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gates of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and you close us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe the promised water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and man, the honor, glory, and praise, and thanksgiving.
write something. Um, I should have had a table here. But I was going to do some arm wrestling. What's your name? Charlotte, you want to arm wrestle with me? Yes? You want to come here? <laughs> yeah? Bridget, you want to arm wrestle with me? Okay, come. We're supposed to kind of like raise our arms and then try and push it over, right? Okay, let's go. Can you push me over? Oh, I'm alive! <laughs> I found it cool. Well, you would all say that's unfair, right? I'm bigger than them, stronger than them. That's not fair, right? Well, today in our lesson, we're going to talk about uh, the, the lesson says that we are in God's hands. And no one can snatch us out of God's hands. And the only person or the only one who tries to snatch us out of God's hands is who? The devil, right? But here's the thing. God is so much stronger than the devil that no one, God says, can snatch us out of God's hands. <clears throat> So we thank God for that, that we're safe in God's keeping. And so let us pray. Please pray after me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That you are stronger than anyone else who can try to take us out of your fear. Please protect us this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I have a little card that says God's love shines bright. Remember, God loves you always. Thanks for joining me. Good morning. The first reading is a reading from Acts. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with a request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is a reading from Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. 
They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. from spending time with the sheep outside all the time. 
Some of them were perhaps even rowdy and crude. But the two greatest heroes of the Hebrew Bible were shepherds. Remember Moses? Moses was living in exile from Egypt, tending the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro in Midian when God called him back to Egypt and demand the liberation of God's people from Pharaoh. The other great shepherd that we think of is the one who wrote the psalm, Psalm 23, right? David. We know the story of David. How David was tending the flocks of his father when Samuel the prophet came to anoint one of the boy's sons to be the next king. And even though David was the youngest of eight brothers, Samuel would not start the celebration until he arrived. So when referring to himself as a shepherd, Jesus is following close on the heels of these giants of the Jewish faith and then by our faith. But rather than just a reference back to the great figures of the Bible, the image or analogy of the, of the shepherd is found throughout the scripture. As I said way back in Genesis, we see that God is referred to as a shepherd. In Genesis, Jacob des describes God as the one who has been my shepherd all my life to this day. Think about that for a moment. God had led Jacob's journey as he would shepherd a flock of sheep, tending for him, caring for him. God as the shepherd also uses humans to shepherd God's flock, God's sheep. And so in 2 Samuel, we see the scriptures refer to the tribal leaders that led God's people also as shepherds. Later, the kings of Israel were called shepherds of God's people, the people of Israel. The only thing is that the kings often fail to tend to their subjects. In Ezekiel 34, the prophet is told, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. The Lord accuses these shepherds of feeding themselves instead of feeding the sheep. And Lord God accuses them of letting the sheep become scattered rather than them, the kings, searching and seeking for the sheep. God therefore states that he is against the shepherds. And then makes an amazing promise. God says, I myself will search my sheep and will seek them out. God is promising to do what the shepherds would not. This is also squarely in line with the images that we see in Isaiah 40, where the prophet proclaims a similar promise. The Lord God comes with might. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Well, it's with this background in mind that we can truly appreciate the bold statements that Jesus makes about himself in John 10. If Jesus is the good shepherd who gathers the sheep together, who lays down his life for the sheep, who saves the sheep, unlike the hired hand who runs away in the face of danger. If Jesus is clever,
claiming all of this about himself, then he's claiming to fulfill what Isaiah and Ezekiel prophesied. Think about that. Jesus is making a bold statement here that he is in fact God. Jesus makes the connection explicit when he says, the Father and I are one. John's Gospel, more than any other book in the New Testament, presents bold statements that Jesus make, makes to prove his divinity. Jesus is God. He is the fulfillment of the prophecies. He is the shepherd who feeds and gathers the sheep in contrast to the mere humans who look out only for themselves. This image of the shepherd is one, as I said before, runs throughout scriptures as a leader who tends to sheep, people who, without proper leadership, would starve and be scattered, who would get eaten by predators. God claims the identity of the shepherd, and that claim is fulfilled in the person of Jesus the Christ. Okay, so now we have our good shepherd, right? But a shepherd has to have sheep to be a shepherd. So let's look at the sheep for a minute. The sheep seem to be pretty helpless without the shepherd. I don't have a lot of experience with sheep, but I do remember days in South, back in South Africa when we would go and visit on the farm of an aunt and uncle of mine who had sheep. It was fun. Especially in spring when the little ones, the little lambs were born and you see them skipping along and hopping and careless, joyful. It was a delight. They were hopping around the mothers without a care in the world. And I think that brings us back to this imagery of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Now I know this is a popular uh, song to be read at funerals. And I think it's because of that one verse that says, that refers to the valley of the shadow of death. The thing is that most times we read it as the valley of death. So even though I'm passing through death, I know God is with me, and that is true. But that's not what this psalm says. I think the New Revised uh, Standard Version has a better translation when it says, the darkest valley. You are with me through the darkest valley. Because you see, this psalm talks to us more about life than about death. In our gospel passage today, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. That's how you tell the sheep of Jesus' fold from the sheep of a different fold. I went on YouTube, because in my research it said you could go to YouTube and see these things. So I went on YouTube and looked at some videos of uh, sheep farmers and they, they did this thing on there where someone would call the sheep and the sheep don't respond and then the shepherd, the farmer whose voice they know, calls them and suddenly they all poke up and they follow the shepherd. It's cute. You should go on there and see it. They really do know the voice of the farmer from and can distinguish from uh, the, the voice of the farmer from another voice. They listen to one and ignore the other. Guess what? We don't like being called sheep, but we do that too. We have that option as well. 
There are plenty of voices in our world that call out to us today, and we could choose to follow any one of them. But there is only one voice that leads to life. It is said that we experience grace in three ways. First, there is prevenient grace. That is that God loves us all and we are all invited into God's family. Jesus died on the cross more than 2,000 years ago for the world, for everyone. So even before we knew we needed to be saved, God saved us on Christ. Prevenient grace. We can liken this to the voice of the shepherd calling out to us even before we know which flock we belong to. Then there's justifying grace. This is the grace that enables us to follow, to hear that one voice and to follow that voice. That is when we encounter the cross where Jesus provided for our salvation and we accept the gift of grace. That's justifying grace. And then there's sanctifying grace. This is the grace which enables us to continually hear our true shepherd's voice even in the midst of our daily uh, turmoil and pain. This is that voice of the Holy Spirit that speaks to us and draws us always into the ways of God. So then, we have a choice. We can hear and follow the voice of the false shepherds that Ezekiel prophesied against. These voices that lead to death. Those shepherds, he says, only faint for themselves. Another choice we have is we can hear or follow our own voice. I know better than anyone what's good for my life. Right? Well, this gets us into trouble. This scatters us. But if we want to be like those lambs in the pasture that are skipping without a care in the world, then we need to follow that one true shepherd. Because it is only in the care of that one true shepherd, God our Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we will be able to live our lives in abundance. Following the voice of Jesus leads to eternal life, but also to a better life in the here and now. Let's face it. We all find ourselves from time to time in a dark valley. But our shepherd is with us. This is the good news that we have today. That our shepherd has a rod and staff to comfort us, to protect us. Again, I want to say Psalm 23 is not about death. It's about having abundant life under the care of the shepherd, both in good times and in bad times. Jacob experienced God as his shepherd leading him throughout his life. Way back in Genesis then, we are given a glimpse of this relationship that believers are called to have with the shepherd. The Bible teaches us that yes, our relationship with God can go haywire in a variety of ways. First, it's because we listen to the wrong voices. 
who distort our uh, belief in Jesus Christ, who drown out perhaps the voice of the one true shepherd. So we have to be careful what voice we listen to. We can also ignore the voice of the shepherd and go our own way. As I said, you know, we have that belief sometimes that we know what's best for our lives. Often, parents pray for their children who have gone astray. But here's one of the things that I have found to be true. The shepherd is the pursuer. The shepherd is the one who leaves the 99 and goes and seeks the lost sheep. Parents today, I want to encourage you. Don't give up on your little sheep. Even if they are wayward, even if they have strayed away, don't put on them. Seek them out. The good shepherd continually calls out to the lost sheep. And you know what? In time, the sheep will hear and respond. And then we have this great promise in John 10 that I spoke of in the children's sermon. The shepherd tells us that no one can snatch us out of God's hands. No one. We, the sheep, can find joy and peace following the Good Shepherd's voice. Or we can find strife and darkness if we follow another. The choice is yours. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we sing in response to Lord's vision.
God and Father of all you, creator and man of the earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffering and punished son, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to the house of the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Set free from captivity to sin and death. We pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy. Especially Betty Bercy, Brenda, Kelly Brown, Charlotte Lester, Chris, Chuck Swain, Dave, Deborah, Dick, Doc Roberts, John, Justin, and Cindy Darby, Edison, Shante, and Sibila. Esther Lopez Gomez, Greg, Hal, Helen Lane, Leah, Martha Rasmussen, Melissa, Philip, Ron, Ron Smith, Ron Spencer, Roy Hatton, Scott, Steve Rasmussen, Sue, Sue Brown, Thomas Alfred, Tim, and the people of the Ukraine. God of mercy. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate, all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nutrient love. From all who serve other roles in our lives, God in your mercy. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God of your mercy. Yeah. Inspire the words of prophets and saints to employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God of your mercy. Yeah. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day. Guide us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. Amen. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May I share that peace with those around us. You may be
is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who shed this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us praise Jesus for us. Our Father in heaven, our Lord, your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins and we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thee thanks to nurse God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever.